Yo, yo, good morning, good morning. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I started a, um, a book reading about God's creative power uh, for finances um, by Charles and Annette Caps. So if you didn't read, if you didn't listen to my first video, go listen to it. Very powerful. Um, and last, uh, that video, on that video I read about my confessions ruled, where he was saying that he invested in money to grow a crop, and basically he lost. He lost 100000 plus 25000 on top of that because of what he confessed, and he bound, he binded God from doing what God wanted to do in his life for him to prosper by speaking negative over his uh, own investment. So uh, just even thinking, didn't have to say it. He thought, and and it began to happen. Okay, thought process. Uh, so I want to continue uh, just to let you know uh, where we're going in and, and uh, get to it. Um, you can have what you say. That's what we're about to read about uh, reading this book here. Um, uh, God's created power for finances. Um, also, if you didn't know, Rich is the brand. You know what I'm saying? I'm the brand. <laughs> I'm the brand, and, you know, Rich is just a part of me. So, um, and if you don't know what Rich stands for, spirit, mind, and body. Rich everything. Rich. Rich. Spirit, mind, and body. Brand yourself. You can't be, uh, you have to be an ambassador for your own things. You have to believe in it first. Rich coffee. You know what I'm saying? We got the mocha. Uh, French roast. Right? Uh, Cordoba, right? Mm-hmm. We also got the breakfast blend. Excuse me. We got the breakfast blend. And I uh, just did a new flavor that I'm about to come out called the, the Colombian. My little sample bag, you know, the Colombian uh, coffee. So, uh, oh yeah, and uh, by the way, all that coffee that there, that's not private. It's kind of like what you call private labeling, but it's not. Uh, because... I went to the factory. The only thing I didn't do is go grab the beans from Colombia and uh, the different places around the world to grab the beans. They were shipped in. Uh, I went to the factory. I set the temperature to the roast temperature that I wanted each one of those to take. I, I specifically, uh, according to my taste buds, and I was told that I have a rich taste, if you didn't know this, rich is... <laughs> but... Uh, um, each one of those coffees, uh, uh, all five of them, I tasted them. Tasted them. And when I got the beans, they was green. A lot of you don't know. You think the greens are brown, and the darker the bean, the weaker the coffee. So you see dark bean, it's gonna be make. It's gonna make a coffee. It's gonna make the coffee weak or whatever. Uh, so I roasted them till where they they hit pretty good. And everyone everyone that tried my coffee loved it. Everyone that tried my water. Loved it. Rich water. Alkaline water. This is alkaline water, guys. Uh, love your body. You only have one. Uh, rich is a lifestyle. As many of you know, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a saying. And that's, that's what I promote. Richness. Uh, for your life. For your family. Your loved ones. Everyone around you should be rich. Alright? Not just, not just financially, spiritually, or mentally, but everything. You know what I'm saying? So... Everything you do. But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, before we get into it, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this day, Father God, that you have made, Father God. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. Thank you for opening our eyes, Father God, to help us see another blessed day, Father God, that you have made, Lord. We're so grateful, Father God, that you are the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega, Father God. We thank you for allowing your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, Father God, that we might have life, eternal life with you in your kingdom, O oh, Heavenly Father God. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Father God, with good health, good strength, Father God. And we're so grateful, Father God, for, to, for today, Father God, for many of us did not wake up, Father God. And Lord, I'm so grateful that you chose me on this day, Father God, to be here at this time, Father God. I pray for everyone, Father God, who's listening to me right now, that you have blessed their lives, blessed their finances, blessed their families. Oh, Heavenly Father God. 
Father God, and we just uh, ask that, Father God, as I present this here, Father God, that they, the hearers of this, Father God, it would affect them in such a great way, Father God, that it would change their lives, Father God, financially, spiritually, and mentally, Father God. And we thank you so much, Father God, for this time. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right? So, let's get into it. You can have what you say out of the book, God's Creative Power for Finances by Charles and Annette Caps. All right? Y'all go get this book. It's a great book. All right? Let's go. Most Christians who are defeated in their finances are defeated because they believe and confess the wrong things. They have spoken the words of the enemy, and those words hold them in bondage. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto the mountains, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Okay. And in Mark 11, 23, excuse me, <clears throat> For verily I say unto you, that whoever shall, whoever so shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. So, listen to that, man. He, God, it was repeated in two complete different chapters, right? In two different books, I mean. In Matthew and Mark, it was repeated twice. So that means something. What you say, and what you say, and what you say has power, power, power. Okay? And what you believe. Now, in, in these passages of Scripture, Jesus tells us that what we believe and speak affects the natural world, the natural world, including our finances. God has given us his word so that he can understand these spiritual laws that govern the universe. These are spiritual laws just as they are natural laws, such as gravity and the law of lift. When you work with these laws, they work for you. When you work against the God, when God's spiritual laws, they, they, uh, they work against you. When you speak negatively about uh, uh, about your finance situation, you can have whatever you say and, and, and believe. Okay? Here's a very important spiritual law. You can have what you say. With your words, you can choose life or death, poverty or riches, sickness or health. You may tithe. Give 10% to the church. Work hard. Pray for prosperity every day. But if your words are negative and contrary to God's word, you could stay milled uh, in debt, struggling to make ends meet. Man, words are powerful, but God's word is full of creative power. When you agree with God, uh, what God has, has said about you and speak his word, your circumstances will begin to change and line up with his for your life. That is deep. When you uh, start speaking, I say you can pay tithes, you can go to church, you can work hard, and you can pray for prosperity every day. Okay, you go into church, you work hard, you pray for, for all of this prosperity every day, right? But at the end of the day, your words have power over that. What you say, it kills everything that you just worked hard for. So, it was a thing that I used to tell people. It was the time where people used to say, I'm going to pray for you. And I said, don't pray for me. Because some people, they pray against you. You got to know the spirit. Just because everybody say, I'm going to pray, you don't know, you don't know who they pray to. And now I found myself to say, I'm going to pray for you. I said, who do you believe in? What God do you serve? Don't pray for me. If you don't believe in the living Bible, and you don't believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can't pray for me. Uh, yeah, I bind it. <laughs> don't pray for me. I used to tell people, like, dudes be praying for each other downfall. And they be like, man, and everybody be like, man, you crazy, man, nobody. I was saying this for decades, man. They were praying for my downfall. And, um, and, and at the end of the day, they would tell me, um, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, it makes a lot of sense. I don't, I, don't, I don't literally mean that 
they are they are sitting down and, and on their knees and saying, I, Lord, I pray he don't make it. It's just what they say. Oh, look at him, man. Look at Tony. Look at that Tony. He look like he, oh, man, he's, look at him. He think he got all that rich stuff and this and that. He got coffee. He got water. Mind you, and the tone in which they say it. They done said, I hope he don't make it. They don't even have to say that. Nobody even have to say that. But in the tone, tone, frequency, in the frequency, y'all don't believe this. In the tone and the frequency would determine how things move too around you and in your life. They, they, just the tone. You know how you say, man, that tone was eerie, right? Like, man, I love you. Right? The tone, you're like, man, I don't feel like you love me, man. You said that bad. But if I said, man, I love you, right? It's a different tone. Right? That frequency is different. Right? So when people are saying things about you, uh, just speaking about you, make sure that tone is set correct and that spirit is correct. Do not allow nobody to touch you, put their hands on you, or pray for you if their spirit ain't with God, the living God, the only God, the only God. There's, no, no, there's many gods, but the only one. <laughs> These these demigods and all this. I don't, I'm not getting to it. I'm not burning candles. I'm not in no ritual, spiritual. you burning candles and sage and all that and saying you, you know, I'm not. No, 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 no. And, I, and I, I'm telling you right now, there's no other way to get to heaven. I mean, that's only through Jesus Christ, his son. His son, I stand on it. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not supposed to debate you. A foolish man argues. I'm not going to argue with you. But I'm going to tell you this here. I'm going to tell you this here. It said, when Jesus returned, it says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. That means you will. That means you have no authority to say, I, I won't say it. It said, you will. It said, every knee shall bow. That's a bold statement. And he meant that. Every knee shall bow, every tongue. That means you will speak it out your mouth. He said, even the rocks, everything God created going to say something. He said, because if you don't cry out my name, the rocks will, right? So guess what? To me, that's saying that, God, you everything. You everything to me in my life. You everything, to everything, everything. I have nothing. Who I am, I'm, I'm, I'm you. I'm created in your image, so I'm going to represent that, all right? But uh, I know I got a little bit, but hey, man, this is what it is. I'm an open person. Everybody know me. I'm transparent about what I do, what I say, and how I think, right? But because that's because I love people. I want to see people prosper. I want to see things happen good in your life. So be careful who you have around you. They, they, they can, even if they, sometimes your friends say, man, you think you better than everybody. But look at you. Look at, oh, this boy clean. But that tone is not right. That's praying against your downfall. That's playing against you. Look at him. He, oh, look at he, he look at him. He, he, 50 years old. Look at him. He think he's younger than everybody else. Playing against your downfall. I hope just, I hope something happened to him. You feel me? That's playing against your downfall. That's praying. Saying, speaking, because we said life and death is in the tongue. So you have to bind that. You have to pray over yourself every day. You have to anoint your life. You have to anoint your family. You have to anoint who you're around straight up. I pray for everybody around me. I say, Lord, don't allow me. My uncle told me, my uncle Blue, man, and I love them. Uh, my aunt Harriet and my uncle Blue, man, I love them. Uh, they're just like, they're just like so transparent. Uh, they're ministers, but they're like so transparent. They're like me. They're like straight up. My uncle, I can tell somebody, I can tell my uncle anything. He gonna say, oh, okay, well, you got this die. He's a DV, you got this die. He called me Darth Vader. You got this, this die. <laughs> you feel me? And I don't know why he called me that, but, you know, uh, but this is a nickname he gave me. But anyway, he said, you got this die. You got six eyes. Always look at that die. Turn it. Right? And you're going to see. Right? So uh, look at things in different angles. Right? So you have to look at people in your life in different angles. You get what I'm saying? You got to look at people in, 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 in your life different angles, man. And, and, um, and pray. Pray hard. Pray hard. Pray against that spirit of people that don't want to see you making in life, that don't want to see you prosper in life. Uh, pray over your own life. 
your words have power your words have meaning so go with it go with it run it you know what i'm saying uh i'm gonna go with it a little bit further uh on this next chapter it said god's will is for you to prosper that's god's will it's already i mean it's already there it's already his will is already there for you to prosper that means you don't have to do nothing but accept it it's like hey man i have a will for you just accept it this is my will and you pray hey lord your will be done <laughs> on earth as it is in heaven that means as it is in heaven that means it was already there it's already there you pull it down pull it down Pull that blessing down. Say, hey, look, I'm pulling this down, this blessing. This blessing is already in heaven. God's will is already in heaven for me to be rich, to be famous, to be whatever you want me to be. God is God already placed it there. You just say, let me reach up and grab it and pull it down, and now I'm here. All right? God's will is for you to prosper. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as they that soul prosperous, prospered. Okay, that's three John, uh, third John chapter two. If you have any doubt that God wants you to pros uh, prosper, you will not be able to release faith for your finances. Whatever you believe and speak will control your financial situation. Begin by confessing um, what God's word says about your finances. Here you go. God's will is for me to prosper and be in health as my soul prospers. Chapter, uh, that's 3 John chapter 2. The Lord has pleasure in prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's, Abraham's blessings are mine. Galatians 3, chap, uh, verse 14. Psalms 35, 27. Read those and speak them out loud. You remember yesterday I told you, said, hey, look, you have to know, study God's word, read about prosperity and the promises that he promised you. Go get them. Write them down. Read them aloud every day. Read them aloud every day. All right? So that's what we just did. All right? As you confess what God says about you, it changes you and your circumstances. If you have any doubt about God's will for your prosperity, read Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28. God told Moses and the children of Israel that blessing and cursings were before them. If they chose to break, uh, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, then they would be blessed in every area. Everything they touch would prosper. If they, if they chose not to hearken unto the voice of the Lord, then they would be cursed with poverty, sickness, and uh, spiritual death. Right? That's verse 15. Poverty is a curse just as surely as sickness and spiritual death are cur uh, curses. But Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So it was a law, but he had redeemed us from that. Okay? So everything, if the, 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 the children of Israel, if they would have just did everything God said, sometimes we don't do everything God tells us to do. We do half of it and then say, God, why you didn't move? Lord, you told me to do this here. But God said, man, I told you to go get the water, go pour it on the grass so the grass can grow. You go get the water, right? But you don't never pour it on the grass, and you expect the grass to grow. Some of y'all live y'all life just right there. You have doing stuff. I'm guilty of it because me, God give me so. I'm going to tell you something. God give me so many assignments that sometimes I'm like, whoa, something ain't right. You know? Because God is not the author of confusion. The devil is. So there's a distraction that's come in and I have to do it. So it's like, Lord, okay, I, I need to, you know, I need to get this together. And, and because I know I can be a lot farther than than I plan to be. And I know God has that for me. Okay, so let me continue. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse of curse for us, for it is written, curses everyone that um Curses everyone that had it, that had on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come in the uh, Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that he that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians three thirteen and fourteen. Man, he had redeemed us from the curse of the law. The curse of the law. He redeemed us. We don't even have to accept that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even have to accept that that curse 
that, 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 whatever it is that's trying to be put on me, I don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept that. D uh, deny it. Deny it. One of the curses in Deuteronomy 28 was the curse of poverty and financial destruction. We have been redeemed from financial destruction. Declare your financial, uh, financial redemption. God already has. God has already redeemed it, right? The blessing of Abraham included financial prosperity. He became a very rich man. Through Jesus, the blessings of Abraham have come upon us as received the promise, the promise through faith in God's word. Too many Christians think that poverty is a curse. But that is not true. They have been deceived. I talked with a Christian lady who is a uh, who, in conversation, remarked, "I'm just poor, and I can't afford the things other people can buy." That may have been a true statement of her uh, current financial status. But what amazed me was that she said it with pride and a sense of self righteousness. <clears throat> it was obvious that she thought she was a better Christian, uh, a better Christian because she was poor. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many people that are Christians and because they think they won't accept it. I don't want a big house. I don't want a big car. I don't want the diamond rings. Man, I don't care what y'all say. I'm going to show up and show out for God because I'm right here and I'm going to be rich forever, spirit, mind, and body. You get what I'm saying? You, you say what you want to say. I want it all. Everything that God has for me, I want it right here on earth. I'm going to have it in heaven. It's already, heaven, already in heaven, but I want my mansions here on earth too. I want y'all to see what God is doing for me, and I'm going to show you what he will continue to do, right? I don't care what you say. I'm going to be out here balling every chance I get. Swimming pools, yachts, islands, $25 million mansions. I don't care what you say, but you the one to think that God wants you to live in poverty and you in church and you say, man, he's giving all the money to the people in church and that. No, you're not. It's a lie before God. God said, bring the tithes into the storehouse. And he said, watch out, show you how I'll pull you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. He said, test me in this. God telling you to test him. And some of y'all are so stupid. Excuse me, but some of y'all are so stupid. That y'all won't even test him. Y'all use it for an excuse, man. I don't believe in that old God stuff. And that, so you so you better get your crystals, hang them around your neck, and rub your crystals and do it. God, I don't want to serve nobody I got to do that every day for. I got to light this camera. I got to do this here. Man, I thank God that I can just go to prayer. I can talk to him like I'm talking to you right now. I say, God, you know what? I'm not feeling today. Lord, you got to make something happen. That's how I talk to God. I don't like that dude over there, God. You know, what's up with him? I don't know what's up with him. You feel me? Lord, these, these people around me, they just kind of shady. Uh -uh. That's how I talk to God. He's my friend. He's my friend. He's my father. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I know I be going off, man, but that's me, man. So, but y'all got to realize that. You know what I'm saying? Through God's words, too many Christians, they think prosperity is a curse. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, but... It says, God's word states the poverty is a curse. Just look at God's real intent. But thou shalt remember the Lord by God, thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy father as it is this day. Deuteronomy 8, 18. If you can be convinced that poverty is a blessing, then God will not be able to establish his covenant through you. If you live in poverty and financial lack, these words are not a judgment against you. You may be poor, but don't, don't be proud of it. To get out of poverty, you have to let go of it and whatever advantage you think it, is provi it provides for you. Let go of poverty. Change it. Let it go. I won't live in poverty. I grew up, man, in the Third Ward, Sunnyside, Southwest. I grew up in the hoods. I grew up in the hoods. That's because we struggled. But guess what? These days, I said, no matter how you start the race, it's how you finish the race. <clears throat> I decree I'm rich in Jesus' name. I'm rich all around, spirit, mind, body, financially. <clears throat> everything I want. I'm looking a little bit rough, but this is what 50 look like. You heard? Because I'm blessed. My family is blessed. 
My kids are blessed. My home is blessed. My mom is blessed. My sisters are blessed. My brothers are blessed. My cousins are blessed. My friends are blessed. My businesses are blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because I speak it every morning. Every morning I wake up, I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for blessing me no matter what happened. Thank you for blessing me. I didn't, went, I didn't have COVID two or three times. <laughs> I never got the shot. And I ain't tripping because God bring me through every time. And I ain't on my back looking up to the ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all y'all, y'all live in fear. Y'all, what y'all say, that's why you're not blessed. But uh, I go on and on, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and for those of you that say I don't work, I don't worship Jesus Christ, and and uh, I don't need all that in my life, and I'm doing good. I got a good my business is running, and everything like that. Oh man, I hate to see when it come crumbling. I thank God that He dealt with me early. Right, I see my life crumble before me plenty of times. Like lose everything. I'm up I'm like this here, up and down. And that's why I'm like, man, that ain't working. And people around you. I'm gonna tell you something. I used to have a partner I used to roll with every day. And you know, we we was hustlers. We go get that money, we go get that bag, we come back with it, you know what I'm saying? And he'd ride with me. And uh one day I was like, man, I'm through. Everything I had, drugs, I gave it to him. I said, bro, I'm out the game. I don't want it no more. And he said, what? I said, I'm out the game. And during that time, during that time, me getting out the game, I went through hell, man. I'm telling you, I went through hell. Um, I went from making five, ten racks a day to working at a... <laughs> at a temporary company. That's when temporary companies had just started. I went to working at a temporary company and they was paying me $7 an hour. And I, but I already made a confession. I said, God, I want to get out. I want better for myself. I want a family. I want a wife and kids. I want to do good by people. And I got out, but that was hard, man. It was years of struggle. And that dude came back to me. He riding around. My boy looked at me. He came to me, he came, he said, man, Tony, here, I can't take it no more. He put 250 grand in my hand. Mind you, now, my lights are off. I'm going through, I'm supposed to get evicted, right? See, I'm telling y'all something, man, I've seen it. That's why I react how I react. That's how I look at people, how I look at people. So, he came and said, man, here, you don't owe me nothing, man. And I'm going to tell you one thing, you do owe. That's a cost you have to pay, whether you serve God or Satan. That's a cost. That's a cost. But Jesus already paid the cost for you. So that's a good thing. The devil ain't gonna pay that cost for you. You'll see when God returns, you will see that devil say, oh no, man. oh no, man. Look. <laughs> Dude gathered on his army because he know where he's going for eternity in the hell, the pits of hell. Okay? So back to it. He pulled up on me, give me the money. I said, man, you see how the devil is? I said, bro, I don't need it. He said, bro, you looking rough. <laughs> Y'all, man, it looked like, <laughs> I, was, I was laughing at myself. I was looking so rough. I was like, man, this dude. And anybody know me know I love to dress. Anybody know me, I love to look good. I love to smell good. You around me, I'm going to smell good. I'm going to look good. I don't care if I'm going to the corner store. That's me, right? And you know what God told me? I looked at him. I said, bro, you know what? The devil blesses people too. He said, oh. and he drove off. I gave him the money back as he drove off. But I just want y'all to know, watch what you say. Be blessed. God bless you. And if you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, I would encourage you and I would tell you to quicken that. Get him. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you don't know him, let's pray about it. So, this is how we start for salvation. Father God, I'm a sinner. And Lord, I don't know, but I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I confess it today with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. 
I confess with my mouth that I believe who you are in my life. I believe that you rose on the third day and you died on cross. You died on Calvary for me, for my sin, that I may have life. So God, if you would accept me, Father God, I thank you for coming into my life. And I, this day, Lord, I crown you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. And it said, ye shall be saved. Don't you know there's angels in heaven that's rejoicing for you today? So, man, I'm rejoicing for you. Welcome to the family. Anytime. Y'all can DM me, help me, support me. God bless. Peace.